were going on a journey. So suddenly, Jane, without warning. Oh, forgive me, my dears. I'm called away suddenly. I shall be away about four days, perhaps more. But you're coming back to us. Why you're taking on was nothing. You're going alone? Yes. It is to see or hear news of a friend about whom I've been uneasy for some time. Oh, Jane. You look very pale. Are you sure you feel well enough to travel? Nothing ails me but anxiety of mind. Which I hope my journey will dispel. Oh, Diane, I cannot tell you any more of the matter. Not now. I'm sorry. Forgive me. This is your home, Jane. You're free to come and go as you please. To go and come back, you mean? Oh, Jane. Come back to us soon. Please. Master might be abroad for all I knew. And if he were at Thornfield Hall with his poor lunatic wife, I dared not seek his presence or speak to him. I decided to ask at the inn. They would be able to tell me all I sought to know. Dirty, ma'am. I see you get down from the coach. Uh, do you wish for a room? Yes. No. How far is Thornfield Hall from here? Just two miles across the fields yonder. I'm going there soon in the chaise, if you'd like me to take you. Thank you. I must go immediately. Please, could you look after my box? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. lady from the coach. I'm here. What has happened? What are you doing here? Uh, you was in such a rare state, ma'am. I, I was worried about you. I was coming this way, so I thought I'd take a look at the poor old hall. I thought you might like me to take you back to the inn. Uh, it is sad, ma'am, isn't it? I used to live here once as butler. Not in my time. You're a stranger to me. Uh, and you to me, miss. No, it was in the late Mr. Rochester's time. The late? Is he dead? Uh, I mean the present Mr. Rochester's father. You must have been away from these parts, ma'am, or you would have heard what happened last autumn. Oh, a dreadful calamity, ma'am. Everything gone, everything burned. Before the engines could arrive from Millcourt, the whole building was one mass of flames. I witnessed it myself. Is it known how it started? Oh, they guessed, ma'am. They guessed. And the servants had a tale to tell. You are perhaps not aware, ma'am, that there was a lady, a lunatic, kept in the house. I have heard something of it. Well, a very queer thing happened a year since. A very queer thing. This lady, ma'am, turned out to be Mr. Rochester's wife. And there was a young lady, a governess at the hall, that Mr. Edward fell in love with. Never mind that, please. Tell me about the fire. Very well, ma'am. 
Well, it seems that upstairs in the lunatic's room, while our keeper was asleep, She lay smashed on the pavement, as dead as the stones on which her brains and blood lay. It, it was frightful. Oh, good God. Were any other lives lost? No, ma'am. Though perhaps it would have been better if they had. What do you mean? Well, poor Mr Edward. Some said it was a judgement for trying to marry that poor girl. You said he was alive? Aye. If you can call it alive, he's stone blind. Well, after Mrs. Rochester died, he was coming down. But there was a crash and he was taken out of the ruins. He was only just alive. Mr. Carter had to amputate one hand and one eye was lost. And the other so badly inflamed, Mr. Rochester cannot see. He's a blind cripple. Where is he now? With old John and his wife at Ferndean, a house he has some 30 miles off. He's very broken down, they say. You came in your chaise? Yes, ma'am. Please, take me to Ferndean. I will pay you well at once. Please, at once. Uh, yes, ma'am. But he won't let folk help him, ever. Mariah, how are you? And John, how are you? Well, not a word of welcome from either of you. I'm not a ghost, you know. Miss A. Is it really you, Miss? Come to this lonely place at this late hour. It is secluded, isn't it? He wishes to live away from the world, miss. Took me hours in the chaise. I've come from Thornfield. I know what happened there. No, how terrible it was. I've sent the chaise away. I'm sure you can find me a room for the night. There's none but that dusty old room upstairs. You can get up there with a broom, John, and light a fire. And I can make sure that Miss Eyre has dry sheets <laughs> and a warm bed for the night. <laughs> That's Master. When you go into your master, tell him there is someone who wishes to see him. But do not give him my name. I don't think he'll see you, Miss. He refuses everybody. John, I left my box under the tree by the gate. Could you fetch it for me, please? It begins to grow dark. And take it to my room. Aye, you yeah, haven't forgotten who does the fetching and carrying, I see, miss. Thank you, John. You're to send in your name and business. Is this what he rang for? Aye. He always has candles brought in at dark, though he's blind. I will take it into him. Oh, Lord, what will he say to me? It's the room at the end of the corridor, miss.
Give me the water, Mariah. What's the matter? Down, pilot. This is you, Maria, is it not? Maria's in the kitchen. Who is this? Who is this? Who speaks? Will you take some more water, sir? I spilled half of what was in the glass. Who is it? What is it? Pilot knows me. John and Mariah know I'm here. I arrived only this evening. God, what delusion has come over me. What sweet madness has seized me. No delusion, no madness. Let me touch you. Her very fingers, her small, slight fingers. Is it you, Jane? What is it? This is her shape. And this is her voice. She is all here, her heart too. Jane Eyre. Uh... Jane Eyre. Uh... I'm come back to you. Such dreams I've had at night when I've clasped her to my heart as I do now and kissed her. And I felt that she loved me. And trusted she would never leave me. Which I never will do from this day. Never. But I always woke and found it an empty mockery. Gentle, sweet dream. You will fly to. Does this feel like a mockery? Do you call this a dream? It is you, is it, Jane? You are come back to me, then. I am. I don't lie dead in some ditch. Oh, shh. You're not a despised outcast among strangers. I'm an independent woman now. An uncle in Madeira died and left me 5,000 pounds. What, Janet? You're an independent woman. <laughs> a rich woman. A free woman? Quite rich. Enough to build a house close by, where you can come and sit in my parlour when you need company of an evening. Ah, you're rich, Jane. You have now, no doubt, friends who will not suffer you to devote yourself to a lame, blind wreck. I am my own mistress, sir. And you will stay. Be your neighbor, your nurse, your housekeeper. If I find you lonely, I will be your companion. I will read to you, walk with you, sit with you, wait on you, be eyes and hand to you. You will not be left desolate by me. This is pity, not love. No. Leave me. No. Leave me! I beg you. It was ever that way. I remember the time Mrs. Fairfax. Anaya? 
Anaya? Yes, sir? Her visitor cannot have left. Where is she? Oh, she... She's somewhere in the house, sir. I'll find her. Bring her to me. Yes, sir. I'm here, sir. Still here. Jane. You must not go. I've touched you, felt you, heard you. I cannot give up these joys. The world may think me selfish, but no matter. Very well, sir. It is settled. Yes. But you understand one thing by staying, and I understand another. What do you say is my understanding, sir? You mean to wait on me like a kind little nurse. You were ever kind. I suppose I must now entertain fatherly feelings for you. Don't you think so? Come, tell me. I shall think, sir, what you like. And you cannot always be my nurse, Janet. You're young. You must marry someday. I don't care about being You should care! If I were what I once was, I would try to make you care. It is time someone undertook to rehumanize you, sir. Have you a pocket comb about you? What for? Come, give it to me. is better. Your shaggy black mane is very alarming. And this? It is a pity to see it. A pity to see your eyes. Scorn your forehead. Do you take supper, sir? I don't want any supper. I never take supper. Well, you shall have some tonight. You're hungry, I'm sure. when there's a good fire. With the right eye, I can see a glow. Can you see the candles? Very dimly. Each is a luminous blur. Can you see me? No, my fairy. But I can hear you and touch you. Jane, I thought you'd be revolted by me. Did you? Am I hideous, Jane? Yes, sir. You always were, you know. <laughs> the wickedness hasn't been taken out of you, whatever you have sojourned. <laughs> I've been with far better people than you, sir. Quite more refined and exalted. Who the deuce have you been with? You will not get it out of me tonight. You are far too tired. I will tell you tomorrow. The wicked changeling. Fairy born, yet human bred. Now I'm going to leave you. I've been travelling these last three days, and I too am tired. Good night, sir. Uh, Jane, were there only ladies where you've been? <laughs> Good night, sir.
The St. John Rivers, then. He's your cousin? Yes, sir. Did you like him, Jane? St. John is a very good man. I could not help but like him. Is he an able man? Truly able, sir. A thoroughly educated man? St. John is an accomplished and profound scholar, sir. His manners, I think you said they were not to your taste. Twiggish and parsonic. I never mentioned his manners. But they are polished, calm and gentlemanlike. Hmm. His uh, appearance, I forget how you described his appearance. Uh, a raw curate, half strangled in a white neckcloth, hmm? St. John dresses well. He is a very handsome man. Tall, blonde, blue-eyed. And with a Grecian profile. Damn him. Did you like him, Jane? Oh, yes, I liked him, sir. But you've asked me that before. Perhaps you would rather not sit beside me any longer, Miss Eyre. Why not, Mr. Rochester? The contrast between a tall, a graceful, fair-haired Apollo and a Vulcan, black, broad-shouldered and... and blind into the bargain. I never thought of it before. But you are rather Vulcan-like. This man, Rivers, he wanted to marry you. You need not be jealous. I only wanted to provoke you. I thought anger would be better than grief. I'm not foolish, Jane. You formed a new tie. With whom? This man, Rivers. St. John Rivers. He's young, he's handsome, he wants to marry you. He will. He does not love me. I do not love him. You of all people should know what that means. Jane. Four days ago, last Monday, I, a singular mood came over me. One in which grief replaced frenzy. I was sitting in my room by the open window. And there broke involuntarily from my lips the words, Jane. Jane, Jane, Jane. You spoke the words aloud? I did. You'll think me mad. For a voice, I cannot tell whence it came, but I know whose it was, replied. It said, I'm coming. Wait for me. And then, a few moments after, there came upon the wind the words, Where are you? Jane, I don't want a nurse or a friend. I want a wife. Do you, sir? Yes. Is it news to you? No. Is it unwelcome news? That depends on circumstances, sir. On your choice. you shall make for me. I will abide by your decision. I leave the choice to you. Choose then, sir. Her who loves you best. I will at least choose her I love best. Jane. Will you marry me? Yes, sir. 
blind man who you'll have to lead about by the hand. Yes, sir. A crippled man, nearly 20 years older than you, who you'll have to wait on. Yes, sir. Truly, Jane. Most truly, sir. I have now been married ten years. Within two years, Edward recovered the sight of one eye, just before our first child was born. I now know what it is to live for and with what I love best on earth. I am my husband's life as fully as he is mine. We are bone of each other's bone and flesh of each other's flesh.